you're, you're with, with the Breaker Leggers. And we are in London in front of the iconic Marble Arch. That's because we are at the Marble Arch Theatre. To see the musical Five Guys Named Mo. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's break a leg or leg it. <laughs> lovely people go any further to make sure you've always got your finger on the theatrical polls of theatre news reviews and interviews just hit subscribe now so five guys named mo musical here at the um i want to say newly erected can you say erected well, i can definitely say erected oh, okay. um, marble arch theatre so what's the story behind this yeah the original production was housed in a temporary space in edinburgh uh, about a year ago played a limited run had intentions of coming into town and they applied for planning permission for a new erection on um, near Embankment Station. Unfortunately, the planning permission got denied and the production transfer got put on hold. But then, due to the magic of Camera Macintosh, they found an alternative site right here on the Marble Arch Roundabout. Now, if you know London at all, you know that Oxford Street's flanked at one end by Marble Arch, and which is a glorified roundabout, let's face it. But now it has the iconic Marble Arch and also this new theatre space on it. And it's a beautiful space. It's really nicely lit. Um, I'll show you some pictures round about now. Um, but yes, it looks nice. Yeah, and I've no in idea what they have planned for this after this show ends. It's currently booking till February. Um, then what? Who knows? Maybe another production will come in here. Hope so. I've heard a nice. few rumours. I've heard that a couple of a couple of people have said this would be an amazing set of setting for Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet. Ooh. Um, if that ever makes an appearance over here after the God, what should we call that storm of negativity that happened at the end of the production on Broadway for that. Look that up, guys. I was going to say, if you that. don't know that, then um, yeah. about the um, storm that happened at the end of that show, then yeah, yeah Google it. It makes didn't, for some interesting reading. Didn't go out on a high, as high as the comet did. Anyway, so what else do we know about this show? We know that the show has been directed by... Let's consult the Oracle, Let's Google. Consult the Oracle. Um, Clark Peters, who's known for directing The Wire. On TV. Don't know it. Do you? Um, I think I have seen, I have heard of it for sure. And also it has choreography and staging by a double award nominee, a double Olivier Award nominee, Andrew Wright, who also choreographed Half a Sixpence. Oh, okay. So uh, obviously he likes Cameron. This is a Cameron Macintosh production. Yeah. Um, don't know much about this. Um, I did see a video of the original a long time ago. Um, I know as much to say there's not really much story. It is just about the music. Yeah, and the music is this, it's, it's basically a jukebox musical featuring the music of Lewis Jordan. I'm sure, I, I mean the name means nothing to me, but I'm sure I know a few of his hits. I hope so. I think it's an immersive setting from what I've heard and the whole um, foyer area has been themed as a New Orleans night jazz club. Um, which could be quite interesting, I think. Well, we'll uh, have a little see when we get in. Yeah, so runtime? Is it, I, th I think it's a couple of hours with an interval, at least the original was. So, we'll see you then. We've come to the interval of Five Guys Named Mo here at the Marble Arch Theatre, which means it is time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 second, second Interval Breakdown. Go! so far yeah it's not a musical it's entertaining it's light-hearted it's fun it's loud it's vibrant but it's not a musical nevertheless the audience is a lapping it up how about you yeah so as Simon said it's not a musical but it is a, a great evening's entertainment so far um, six of them so it's very exposed totally immersive song after song after song but they're doing very well in making each number quite dynamic and different another act to go yet come to the end of Five Guys Named Mo here at the Marble Arch Theatre. So how did you find that? I thought it was good. I thought it was feel good, fun factor, um, kind of audience participation. Basically, it's the type of show that you're going to enjoy if you are bladdered before you go in because you're going to totally lose all your inhibitions, you're going to throw caution to the wind, and you're going to literally chuck yourself into the action, because this is what this show calls for, and that's what this show is. It's an interactive jazz rock and roll show. 
it's not a musical. What do you think? Well, I guess it depends on your definition of a musical, really. Um, yeah, it's, it's music, it's song, and it's dance, so it fits the bill of musical that way. It's a very loose story, but it's, I think I may have seen musicals with even looser threads of I this narrative and the storyline. I don't know if I have. I think it's, in terms of narrative, it has next to none. It's, it's more of a, um, an experience... Although it's an experience, I'd say there there is also a loose thread about um, is it Nomax? Yeah. Following Nomax and his discovery of you know his relationship and learning about love and the mistakes he's made in yeah, life. Yeah, and, and that's it. It's basically a morality story about um, you know all the things you're doing wrong in order to waste your life and to waste your opportunities and happiness and relationships. It's preaching a moral lesson. Is the narrative. But even then, it's very thin. Yes, I, I mean, it, I agree. I'd probably it, it explained it more thin. than is actually in it. Well, I, that's why I'd say, I, as opposed to a musical, I'd say it's just a good night's entertainment. It's uh, and it is very feel good, and I think that is very much to do with the audience participation. Um, you can't really be a bystander. I think the nature of the venue makes it very intimate, at least where we were anyway. I think even at the rear of the stalls you're probably still quite close to the action, especially at times as they come all the way right out to the, um, to the front. It, by and large, it's a party. It's, uh, there's a conga line. There's sing along with us. There's um, shout outs. There's get you up on stage. It is just a, yes. it's kind of like um, almost pantomime slash burlesque club slash jazz. It's, it's, it's interactive. Now I'll talk about this ever so briefly, but I did have an issue with one of the numbers in the second act where they brought three girls up. Uh, and in terms of inclusivity, I'm sure uh, there were assumptions made about sexuality that I don't think was applicable to all three. And I thought that's personally for me, I thought that was a bit off. Do you that uncomfortable? Was, I was. I was like, I was uncomfortable for the person as well. I was thinking we're assuming stuff like this. The world has kind of moved on. If we're inviting people up in, from the audience. I don't think we're in the day and age where we can make assumptions about people. But that may well be just me, and I know that's probably more of a personal agenda. Yeah, and it was However, a, it they was, went along with it, it and did. everybody had a great time. And it was a lead-in to a song about a heteronormative relationship in the 1940s, which However, is what the song is, what it is. They have invited people up, and because they're singing it to the people about their relationships, I question whether that's appropriate, then don't invite the audience. That's yeah. what I'm going to say. 90% that's of the time, it would have worked. 90% of the time, it would have worked. Um, I've got to say, absolutely loved the lighting. Um, the lighting was fantastic, integrated all around the venue, um, up lighting, I don't know how, there were no follow spots, but the lights were moving with the characters, so I don't know what interactive technology they're using or uh, what interactive technology is available to be able to track the um, performer and move with them. That was pretty Well, uh, I did impressive. notice on their, on their shoulders, actually, small white tags. Well, we're going to meet so up with one of the cast members yeah. later, so hopefully... Um, I think there's computer-generated um, um, you know, tracking motion. That would make sense, because I thought that was, in this venue, that was very nifty. The lighting designer was Philip Gladwell, and he did do an excellent job, absolutely fantastic So Philip job. Gladwell with the lighting was fantastic. Yeah. I thought that was brilliant. And the performers? What do you I think loved performers? all the performers, and I thought they had very distinctive individual characters, and, and that came across really well for me. In, in what they were offering on the stage. I, I, I enjoyed them all. Yeah, it's the same. I think they're all very unique in themselves. You have the strong singers, you have the very strong dancers, but each in their kind of their mo's, whether it's eat mo, uh, little mo, big, big mo, mo, four eyed mo, yeah. all very distinct characters. Um, no, no mo. No mo, yeah, no it max. Has been brought to our attention that actually the director of this piece is not a director of the wire. It's actually an actor in, in yes. the wire, and also wrote the musical. So if you're looking for a true interpretation of someone's intent, then I don't suppose you can get any closer than the actual 
playwright directing their own piece. So I think this yeah. is a very true piece to what they're expecting to be. And I mentioned it briefly in the interval, but the way that it's been directed is very interactive, um, genius direction almost. If you're thinking it's number after number after number, that can get very stale and very bored with just six cast members but the way it moves around the stage, the way it moves with the lighting, the interaction as well, and the interaction with each other, just right. So, I bet you're wondering how many legs we are going to give the piece. So, for five guys named Mo here at the Marble Arch Theatre, we are going to give... Three! Three legs! Yeah, it's not a musical in the most traditional sense of the word. I had issues with it billing itself as a musical and, and and then what it actually delivered, which is just a really interactive, fun piece of jazz rock and roll. Yeah, it's a nice uplifting story. Not much there in terms of content, in terms of plot, in terms of a thorough entwining narrative. It's no Chekhov. No. It's no Agatha Christie. No. It is just five guys named Mo. It is. <laughs> I guess but if you had a cocktail before you come in, I can guarantee you're going to leave with a smile on your face. Come to enjoy yourself, to entertain yourself and to have a party and get stuck in and you won't be disappointed. That's the audience were up on, the, on their feet. Absolutely. Well, that's what we thought. Have you seen the show? What did you think? Please let us know. Leave your comments below. We'd love to hear from you. We're the Breaker Leggers and we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.